Hello, in this video we're going to be using the equations of motion to find the answer to this quite simple SUVAC question and I want you to focus on the process rather than the answer. I've picked a really easy one so that um, we can just look at how to do them. Obviously they get a lot harder than this but the process is the same and I'm going to talk you through a reasonably foolproof process so as long as you're good at rearranging the equations you should have no problem at all in solving any of these uh, relatively straightforward single body SUVAT questions. So let's get going. All right, now whenever you're doing any SUVAT problem, uh, we need to think about what values we've got, what variables we've got, and which ones we need to find. And the best way to do that is to start by writing a vertical list of the five SUVAT quantities and figuring out which ones you've actually got in the question. Okay, so let's have a look at the numbers. Um, so we'll read the question. A car accelerates from 5 meters per second and reaches a final speed of 15 meters per second. So we've got two speeds there and we know that this one's the initial velocity, so that's u, and this one's the final velocity, so that's v. Okay, so we've got u and v, so we can write those in. So u is 5 meters per second, and v is 15 meters per second. Okay. In a time of 20 seconds. So we know that the time is 20 seconds. So we can put that in immediately as well. Now I've got three. We can, we can use these equations of motion, which I've listed over here, to solve the problem. All right, so what does it ask us to do? It asks us to find the average acceleration, assuming it's constant, because obviously um, these, these Equations don't work unless the motion is constant, which is why I've just put that little that little bit in there. We're finding the average anyway, and the average is going to be a constant, so that's fine. And the distance travelled, which is effectively the same as the displacement. So the first thing it's asking us to do is find the acceleration and then the displacement. So I want to find A first, so we'll put an asterisk there, because that's the one we're trying to find. Okay, so we have three of the equations of motion and we want this fourth one. So what we have to do is select one of these equations over here from this list. Most of them are actually given in your data booklet anyway, so you don't have to remember them. But we have to select one and we have to possibly rearrange it to find the variable that we want and then we just have to substitute numbers. Okay, so we've got V, U and T and we want to find A. So if we look down the list we've got V, U and T and A. So this is the one that we need to use, this second one here, V equals U plus AT. All right, <clears throat> so we can write this down, V equals U plus AT. All right, now we're trying to find A, so we need to rearrange it, and when we do that, we get A is equal to, we move the U over first, V minus U, oops, sorry, I'm just going to get rid of that and do that one again. The V minus U, divided by t. So that rearranges to that. V minus u over t is equal to a. Once we've got that, we'll just substitute the values like any physics equation. So v is 15 minus u, which is 5, divided by t, which is 20. And I'm leaving the units off those. So a is therefore equal to 15 minus 5, which is 10, divided by 20, which gives us 0 0.5 meters per second squared because it's acceleration. Okay, so we've done the first one. So we can now put in there um, 0 0.5 meters per second squared. There we go. All right. So that's the first bit of the question done. The second bit of the question asks us to find S. Now we've actually got all four here. All right. Um, so we can use whichever one we like over here. But it's quite um, good practice to use only the data that's given to you in the question. Because obviously, obviously if you've made a mistake here with this, then that error will be carried forward. And you might get marks for that, or you might not. So it's best to use your original data if you can find an equation that fits it. And because we've got three, we can effectively find either of the other two by using one of the other equations. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use u, v, and t again, and we're going to try and find s. And for that one, we need this first equation up here. All right, so we're going to use s equals a half of v plus u times t. 
to try and find S. So we're going to write that down under here. Okay, S is equal to a half of oops, V plus U times T. Okay, sorry, that's a little bit scruffy there. I hope you can understand that. That's just this equation up here. All right, we don't need to rearrange it because S is what we're looking for. So we can say S is equal to our half. And then substitute the rest. 15 plus 5. times t, which is 20. So we've got a half, 15 plus 5 is 20, so it's a half of 20 times 20, 20 times 20 is 400, so s is going to be 200 meters. We know the unit is going to be meters because all of these are in standard units of meters per second, etc. meters per second and seconds. Okay, so s is 200 meters. So we know now that the displacement or the distance moved by the car during this time is 200 meters. Now hopefully you can see from this the predictive power because you know exactly where the car is going to be after this motion and you know the average acceleration. Okay, so that's how we use the equations of motion to solve problems. They do get harder uh, and much more complex but that, that's a nice simple one. So it's the process that's important. So let's just talk through that again. Um, the first thing we do is we find we, we write a list, a vertical list of SUVAT in that order because obviously this is the hierarchy of variables displacement, velocity, acceleration and then time kind of sits on its own but you write them down in the SUVAT order then you look at the question, you find your variables and you put those into the this list until you know what you've got. As soon as you've got three so we had one, two, three we can then come over here and select an equation of motion that we want to use, rearrange it for the variable we want, and then substitute and find an answer. That is a fairly foolproof method of solving SUVAT questions. And it's all about writing this list down and figuring it out what you've got. Figuring out what you've got before you start trying to solve the problems. If you do that, you should get it right every time. Thank you for listening.